So as we track an object's position over time, it's often useful to graph this data. We put it on what's called a position time graph where position is on the y-axis and time is on the x-axis. Okay, We're going to look at graphs where the velocity of that object, the, the rate at which it's moving, is constant, which means that the velocity is not changing. When this is the case, when you've got a constant velocity, you get a straight line graph. So here's an example of a position time graph for a runner. We've measured how long it took him to get to various positions, 0 meters, 50 meters, 100 meters, 150 meters. He was at 0 meters, his starting position at 0 seconds. <clears throat> after 10 seconds, he was at 50 meters. After 20 seconds, he was at 100 meters. And after 30 seconds, he was at 150 meters. So we just plotted those points and then drew a line. Using this line, we can figure out the runner's speed by using the slope. Remember that slope is rise over run. In this case, our rise is our change in position, our meters, that's a distance, right? And our time, I mean our run, our x-axis gives us time. So here we've got meters per second. That's a speed unit or a velocity unit if we have direction. So we can figure out this runner's speed or velocity by using the slope. Let's do this. Let's calculate the slope of this runner's motion. At 10 seconds, he was at 50 meters. At 30 seconds, he was at 150 meters. So we can say 150 minus 50 30, oh, meters. 30 seconds minus 10 seconds gives us 100 meters over 20 seconds, which gives us 5 meters per second, so this is the runner's speed. If we knew the direction of the run, we could figure out the velocity. We can also put more than one object or person's data on the same graph to compare their speeds. The steeper the slope, the faster the speed. We can kind of tell just by, by looking at the graph, by reading the graph. At 20 seconds, this blue runner had gone 100 meters, but this red runner had only gone maybe 80 meters. So we can, just by looking and reading the graph, it should be obvious that the steeper the slope, the faster the runner, but you can actually calculate the slope to prove it. So let's do the slope of A. We'll pick two points. For this, for runner A, this blue line, at 200 meters, took her 40 seconds. 100 meters, took her 20 seconds. So we get 100 meters over 20 seconds. So again, we get that 5 meters per second speed. That's for A. For B, this red line, we can, we can pick two different points. I'll pick this one and this one. We'll keep our distances the same. So at 200 meters, she had been running for 50 seconds, and at 100 meters, she had been running for 25 seconds. 200 minus 100 gives us 100 meters. 50 minus 25 gives us 25 seconds. 
100 divided by 25 is 4. I'm sorry, that's not a decimal. 4 meters per second is the speed for runner B, or the, which is graphed in red. So her speed, runner B in red, is 4 meters per second compared to 5 meters per second. The, um, the calculations, the math supports that this steeper slope is a faster runner. Let's look down here. Here's a, a graph. Each segment here has a constant velocity, but over time the velocity for this object does change. Here, in, from A to B in that segment, we've got a positive slope. Whenever you have a positive slope, that means you have a positive velocity, which means you're going in a positive direction. Okay? When you have no slope, like this, that means that at, if this is 10 seconds, at 10 seconds we were at 8 meters, and at 20 seconds we were still at 8 meters, we haven't moved at all. That means we have a velocity of nothing. We're not moving. We're not changing positions. We have no speed. Right? So it's a no slope, a horizontal flat line, is, um, tells us that we don't have any movement, any motion. A negative velocity, I mean a negative slope tells us we have a negative velocity, so we're going in a negative direction. We might have a situation like this where we're in the negative quadrant, right? We're down here in the negative numbers, but we still have a positive slope. So we're still going in a positive direction. Or we'll have, but now we went away from our object in a positive direction, then we went in a negative direction back past our object, so now we're in the opposite direction from our reference point, our original point, and now we're moving back towards, in a positive direction, our original reference point, is what that means. Let's look at this example here. There are three places where we know we are not moving. We have no motion. From A to B, from 0 to 5 seconds, we have no, we have a 0 meters per second velocity. We are no motion. We're at negative 5, and at 5 seconds we're still at negative 5 meters. So we know that we haven't moved at all. From B to C, that's from 5 seconds to 11 seconds, we went from negative 5 to negative 2 meters, oops, 11 seconds, minus 5 seconds. So negative 2 minus negative 5 gives us a positive 3 meters. 11 minus 5 gives us 6 seconds. So that gives us a positive 0 0.5 meters per second as our speed, or velocity rather, for this segment. Here we have a speed of 0 0.5 meters per second. It's positive. Here we've got another horizontal line, so we know we're going 0 meters per second. Here. We've got, an, we've got a positive slope, so we know we're going in a positive direction. We should come up with another positive velocity. But it's a much, it looks like a much steeper slope, so we should be going faster than 0.5 meters per second. Let's do our math and see if it works. This is from 20 to 30 seconds. So at 20 seconds, we were at negative 2. And at 30 seconds, we were at 8. So 8 meters minus negative 2 meters. 30 seconds minus 20 seconds gives us 8 minus negative 2 gives us 10 meters over. Here we've got 30 minus 20, 10 seconds. So we've got a speed, or a velocity rather, this should be positive, of a positive one meters per second. So again, our little rule of thumb that the steeper the slope, the faster the speed has worked. Here we've got a zero meters per second velocity again. We're not moving. And then our final leg from F to G, 
This is from 40 seconds to 44 seconds. We have a negative slope, so we should have a negative velocity. At 44 seconds, we're at zero meters. At 40 seconds, we're at eight meters. So that gives us negative eight meters over four seconds. That gives us a negative two meters per second as our velocity. Okay, so we're going in a negative direction, but we're going faster than we were going anywhere else on our trip. Okay, so to get the speed or the velocity, depending on whether or not you have directions, all you do is calculate your slope. And to do that, you do rise over run, or you can use the formula y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. Make sure you keep your coordinates together. And you should come up with a distance over time unit, which would give you speed or velocity, depending on if you have directions.